The Cauchy criteria for conversion says that a sequence is convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. Okay, so basically what we're trying to say is that convergence, convergence, oh, sorry, convergence implies Cauchy. And Cauchy implies convergence for any sequence, okay? So if you have convergent sequence, that will be Cauchy. And if you have Cauchy sequence, that will be convergent. Let's try to prove it analytically. Okay, so let's first try to prove this implication that convergence implies Cauchy. So what are we given that means? Let us assume, okay, suppose... A n is convergent. Okay, suppose a n is convergent, say to some limit a. Okay, say to a. It's convergent to a. So we need to prove a n is Cauchy. Okay, we need to prove that A n is Cauchy. So what do we need to prove that means? What do we need to prove? We need to prove that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists some capital N, any natural number N such that for any M and N greater than or equal to N, what do we have? We have that the distance between the two is less than epsilon. The distance between the two is less than epsilon. The two terms is less than epsilon. So let's start off with an epsilon greater than zero. So let's start proving it, okay? So let's write down the proof of it. Let epsilon greater than zero be given to us. Okay, let epsilon greater than zero be given to us. In that case, I know that this is convergent, right? Now, epsilon is greater than zero. That means epsilon by two will also be greater than zero. Okay. Now, also what do I know? I know that a n tends toward a. So that means by definition of convergence, there exists some capital N such that for any n greater than or equal to this n, natural number n, a n minus a is less than epsilon by 2. Okay. So therefore, for any m also, so for any m and n greater than or equal to this capital N, what will you have? Let's consider consider the distance between a n and a n consider the distance between a n and a n what i can do let, let's do some sort of manipulation here let's add and subtract a okay so subtract a and add a let's subtract a and add a okay subtract and add a or I could also write it as the same thing if I write it as a n minus a plus a minus a n. Okay, it's the same thing. Now, this is one real term, this is one real term. I can use triangle inequality here. Now, this will be less than or equal to the mod of this plus mod of this, mod of this plus mod of this, okay, this will be less than or equal to this. You write it as a minus a n or a n minus a, it's one and the same thing in absolute value, right? So which is less than, I know this will be also less than epsilon by 2 because a n tends to a a n tends to a so for any m or n these this is it's just denoting it happens for n it happens for m as well right 
plus epsilon by 2 again for the same reason a n tends to a and the reason for the previous is your triangular triangle inequality of absolute value of absolute value okay so which is equal to epsilon so what do i know i know that mod a n minus a n is less than epsilon for all m and n greater than or equal to n okay for all m and n greater than or equal to n so that means for the given epsilon greater than zero there does exist a capital natural number n okay capital n as your natural number n for any m and n greater than or equal to n such that the distance between a and a n is less than epsilon okay and that is your that implies that a n is Cauchy is a Cauchy sequence. It's a Cauchy sequence. Okay. This means that it's a Cauchy sequence. Now let's do the other way around. Let's do the other way around. Okay. Which means that I need to prove that Cauchy implies conversion. Okay. Conversion. Okay, so let a n this time be Cauchy. Okay, let a n be a Cauchy sequence. Okay, we need to prove to prove a n is convergent. Convergent to some limit. Okay, so let's try to prove it. Let's try to prove it. So the proof is like this a n as a n is Cauchy. Okay, by the previous lemma, what do I know? This implies that a n is bounded. Okay, so at least I know that the sequence is bounded for sure. Okay, it is a bounded sequence, so a n is bounded. Now, a n is bounded, what does that imply? This is by the lemma, previous lemma, every Cauchy sequence is bounded. And if you have a bounded sequence, try to recall the bolzano weierstrass theorem, which says that it should have, it should have a subsequence which converges to a limit, okay? So by bolzano Weierstrass theorem, Weierstrass theorem, a n n greater than or equal to one has a subsequence. Subsequence, say a n k k greater than or equal to one, converging. To some limit to say a belonging to r some real number r okay a belonging to r now let's prove that let's let us prove that a n actually tends to a okay now so what do i have to prove we have to prove that Okay, remember it's very important for you to clarify what you need to prove off and on, okay? We need to prove that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a k such that for any, any say small k greater than or equal to this capital K, a k minus a is less than epsilon, okay? It's less than epsilon. So that's what we have to prove. Okay, so let epsilon by 2 be given to us. 
be given which would be greater than 0. So, epsilon by 2, take epsilon greater than 0, epsilon by 2 will be given 0. Now, we know something about A and K. A and K tends to A. So, what does that imply? That implies that there exists an N such that for any K greater than or equal to this capital N, a and K minus A is less than epsilon by 2. It's less than epsilon by 2. Okay. Now, we know that A and is Cauchy. Okay. Let's use that somewhere. Now, A and is Cauchy. That means that there exists an N such that for any k and m greater than or equal to n what do i have we have that we have that a k minus a m is less than epsilon by 2 Okay, it's less than epsilon by 2. Uh, this would be greater than m. I'm taking an m here okay, just to distinguish between n and m. Huh? So I'm taking an n here just to distinguish between n. I'm just taking an m here. Okay, so now let us take the max of n and n. So let us take if it is happening for any k, for any k greater than or equal to k, okay, now this was happening for any k greater than or equal to n and this is happening for any k greater than or equal to n. So let me take k greater than or equal to k, capital K, which is actually the max of m and n okay okay so this will happen for all case okay for all such case okay this will happen for all such case now we have we also know one thing now n k will be greater than or equal to k which will be greater than or equal to this k this is by definition of subsequence subsequence okay so this is by definition of subsequences now now look at a k minus a mod i can just do a bit of manipulation here let's do a bit of manipulation here add and subtract a and k add and subtract a and k Okay, so this is what it will be. This is what it will look like. And this will be less than or equal to, again by triangle inequality, it will be less than or equal to this plus this. This we know is less than epsilon by 2 by the definition of convergence of this subsequence. And this we know again will be less than epsilon by 2 by what we proved here. Okay, by what we proved here by using Cauchy. By using Cauchy. Okay. So what do we have? We have that this thing is less than epsilon. So what is happening essentially for the given epsilon greater than 0, there does exist a k such that for any k greater than or equal to k, a k minus k is less than epsilon, which means that a, which means that a n, the sequence a n tends to a okay by definition 
form convergence. Okay, by definition of convergence, an tends to k because this is happening for any natural number greater than or equal to the given natural number capital K. Okay, so that means that Cauchy implies convergence and convergence implies Cauchy. So if you start with any any sequence which is Cauchy, you know it that that will be convergent. These both both these terms are equivalent to each other. Convergence and Cauchy are equivalent to each other. 